The Rock returned to Monday Night Raw January 1st, 2024. To The Rock, sit at the head of the table. And since then, the WWE has absolutely not been the same. Now go home and smoke some more crack. What's up guys, it's Kaze here. I recently just saw Sunny V2's video about how The Rock is declining in popularity. And as someone who's covered The Rock on a week to week basis for the last four months, I will say his fan reception has been polarizing to say the least. Now this video serves two purposes. On one hand, it's a compilation of my week to week coverage of The Rock's road to WrestleMania. I feel like during that time we saw The Rock in a different light than we've ever seen him before. And it also ties into a little bit of what Sunny V2 was saying. But at the end, I also weigh in on The Rock's seemingly shrinking fan base. And to add more reasons why it could possibly be happening. For those of you who may have already seen my week to week coverage, I am sorry. Having all the videos in one place really made more sense to me. If you're a fan of wrestling, please consider liking and subscribing. I cover wrestling in all types of aspects, whether that's in the ring, outside the ring, in TV shows, or business wise. And without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> The Rock returns to and later in the same month, he joins the WWE TKO board of directors. Now this is big for so many reasons and it leaves a lot of questions on the table, such as what about The Rock's acting career? What about his ownership of the XFL? Like are these ventures he's, I don't wanna say put to the side, The Rock's very capable of doing all these at once, but these are a lot of things that require a ton of time. So just how much time will he be putting to each is my question. But also he was granted ownership of the name The Rock. This is huge because he's already a huge megastar all over the world. Now he has has a catchy nickname that we already know him by to put on whatever he wants to sell. This is a struggle for a lot of superstars, to be honest. Like, John Cena doesn't even own his own name. Ryback had to change his name to Ryan Ryback in order to actually be able to call himself Ryback. This was a huge mega move for The Rock. WWE just held a WrestleMania 40 press conference and they were gonna reveal the main event of WrestleMania. The Rock was there, Roman Reigns was there, Triple H was there, Seth Rollins was there, Cody Rhodes was there. And Cody Rhodes cut this promo on The Rock and Roman Reigns and he lit them on fire, I'm not gonna lie. This promo was outstanding. So Cody Rhodes gets to write the next chapter in his story and he chooses Roman Reigns to face in the main event at WrestleMania. So as I mentioned, Cody had a few words for The Rock and Roman Reigns and he mentioned a few legendary members in Roman Reigns' bloodline, such as the High Chief. And The Rock wasn't too pleased with this. He steps up to Cody Rhodes and he straight up says, if you're talking about Roman's family, you're talking about my family. If you're talking about Roman's bloodline, you're talking about my bloodline. And that is a key phrase right there. So The Rock then proceeds to tell Cody Rhodes that they have a problem. And then he slaps Cody Rhodes right in the face. In my opinion, this just effectively turned The Rock heel. Now this is insane because The Rock is notorious for not wanting to be viewed as the bad guy. That's why he and Vin Diesel got into it. That's why in all his movies he's the good guy kind of in Black Adam but even then not really. So this is the first time The Rock has actually put story over his public image in I don't know how long. So I mentioned in my last video when The Rock came back Initially, it caused so much confusion over who was going to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And I said this was a good thing just because we shouldn't really know immediately what the main event of WrestleMania was going to be. And I'm sticking to that point just because this entire time they worked me over. It seemed like they got everybody else as well. There are so many We Want Cody comments all over the place. There were some in my videos and I'm on his side. Thanks for commenting, by the way. I really appreciate that. And all that really did was make the hype for Cody Rhodes grow even stronger. People wanted to see him win even more. And now he's an even bigger star. So The Rock really seems to be leaning into the 
I'm an evil tyrant joining the company character. And it's the smartest idea that they could have possibly went with. By this point, a lot of people are probably tired of The Rock coming back finally. And to be honest, even that was still gonna sell tons of money. This is exactly what all the fans were saying that he was doing, like just in real life. He was joining the company, he was putting himself into the main event. So for him to actually portray that on TV now builds even more intrigue. And this is a perfect way to play this story going forward. So now we know it's gonna be Cody versus Roman in the main event of WrestleMania, but now we don't know how does The Rock play into all of this? And how big a role will he play in all of this? And just when you thought things couldn't get more chaotic, the grandson of a plumber calls out the biggest movie star in the world. Yes, Cody Rhodes challenges The Rock to a match. I want to wrestle you one on one anytime. Now, I believe they're setting up for a tag team match between Cody and Seth and The Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Rumor has it that The Rock really wants to be involved at WrestleMania. With this potentially being his first match in 10 plus years, it would benefit him greatly for it to be a tag team match. However, Cody mentioned that he did want to do this before WrestleMania. But until then, I am wide open. Hey yo! So I noticed that they keep throwing in little swerves and jabs to keep us off track of what they're actually building towards. And this is leaving fans speculating like crazy. So in related news, we actually got Drew McIntyre winning the Elimination Chamber. This was a really good match by the way, everybody in there got to shine. I'm not a big fan on how AJ Styles attacked LA Knight in the chamber, just because the whole purpose of the chamber is that no one can get in, no one gets out, and it seems like a lot of people get in. But aside from that though, this is a really good match. Drew actually looks like he might win at WrestleMania. Aside from Roman, he's the biggest heel in the company. So The Rock's had quite the Friday, hasn't he? Jeez. The Rock drops a pretty scathing promo on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Now, this promo was much needed just because he pretty much just filled all the plot holes that WWE had with the storyline. Now, there are a lot of things that didn't make sense about the Bloodline storyline and Cody Rhodes. For instance, Cody wins the Royal Rumble, points at Roman saying, I want to face you, and then just a few weeks later, gives his spot away to The Rock. Now, Cody's reasoning behind this was he had some counsel from a few people backstage. Out comes The Rock and then you know the story. So after all the We Want Cody chants and the We Want Cody hashtags, Cody Rhodes then interrupts The Rock and Roman Reigns promo, promoting their supposed match at WrestleMania. So in a lot of people's eyes, we're questioning, why did Cody give away his spot at WrestleMania just for him to then take it back a few weeks later? Now this caused even more confusion about whether this was always the plan or if WWE had to change plans on the fly. So if you don't have time to watch the whole promo, let me break it down really quick. So this promo pretty much explained everything that happened from The Rock's return on January 1st all the way up until today. And at the time of this recording, it's March 1st. So he promises January 1st that there are going to be big changes, and he delivers on that. He joins the board of TKO, and he also returns to semi-weekly television. He explains after becoming a part of the board of directors, and after Cody won the Royal Rumble, that they all talked to Cody backstage, and he agreed that The Rock versus Roman Reigns was best for business. Now, this is interesting because Cody actually is one of the faces of WWE, if not the company spokesperson. So agreeing that that match would be best for business isn't out of the realm of something Cody Rhodes would do just because he is such a for the business type of guy. So then he finally answers the question we've all been wondering. What did he whisper to Cody Rhodes that night that Cody just gave his spot away? Apparently The Rock said let's put on a great WrestleMania for your father and for my father. Now, I still don't know how exactly Cody was supposed to do that if he was giving his spot away, but that was the explanation that we got. Is it a good one? Kinda, it makes sense character-wise, but logically, it still doesn't make too much sense. 
So the overall explanation is that Cody Rhodes agreed that The Rock versus Roman should happen and Cody was just gonna have to bite the bullet. But once The Rock started to mention that his family was the greatest wrestling family in history, Cody had had enough. The Rock then starts to get on Seth Rollins and calls him the clown emoji, calls him a walking clown show, says he has no idea why Seth Rollins is getting involved in this, but because he's the boss, he can put Seth's title on somebody else. Now, aside from the whole walking clown thing, I am glad that The Rock didn't bury Seth like he really could have. It seems like Seth is kind of the odd man out just because he really doesn't have anything to do with this exact storyline. Like I know he's got his history with Cody and I know he's got his history with Roman, but there is no real reason that he should be this protective over Cody, considering they literally hated each other upon Cody's arrival. Not to say I don't want Seth in this position, him and Cody are actually carrying the whole feud on a weekly basis. And he's also got another feud with Drew going on, so he's kind of getting pulled in two directions. Now this promo gave me enough information for me to make a decision, and I believe this was not always the plan. How could it be? They were literally setting up for CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. That was gonna main event night one of WrestleMania. And speaking of that, The Rock wasn't done here. So later on in the day to open up SmackDown, Roman Reigns after a nine minute entrance, finally enters the ring and he's asking for acknowledgement. Now, admittedly, the Glendale, Arizona crowd was not that loud for Roman. So he proceeds to do the acknowledge me two more times in order to get a bigger reaction. He doesn't get the reaction he's looking for and he decides he's gonna leave. But Paul Heyman stops him and says, no, The Rock will be here in just a few moments. So we cut to commercial and after a six minute entrance from The Rock, we get another promo. Man, so after going in on that Glendale crowd, The Rock then challenges Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins to a tag team match as most of us suspected. However, there are a few stipulations. If Cody and Seth win, then Cody faces Roman on night two of WrestleMania and the bloodline will be banned from the match. And if The Rock and Roman win, then the bloodline will be allowed ringside and they are also allowed to do whatever they want. Now the stipulations of these matches are pretty interesting because after Solo's interference last year, there was a lot of talk of, well, why wasn't the bloodline banned from the match in the first place? Now, it seems like they're rectifying that and also adding a bit more entry. And the last major thing to note throughout all this, Roman looked like he had quite an issue with The Rock kinda coming in and getting the reaction he got and also taking the spotlight. During this entire promo, The Rock did most of the talking, if not all of it, and it looked like the entire time it was just rubbing Roman the wrong way. So The Rock goes for his signature catchphrase, if you smell, and Roman stops him. He says, you know I'll do anything for my family, but I need you to do me a favor, and he's asking him as a cousin. Roman then asks The Rock to acknowledge him, and to many surprise, he does. He did it, I saw him. So this is just a lot of foreshadowing for many storylines moving forward, and it's building so much intrigue for the product and excitement from the fans. Oh man, this is never a good sight. The Rock with a cowboy hat? So The Rock's back at it again with his Twitter promos, and he is completely unhinged. This guy's got beef with Cody, Seth, Pharaoh, standards and practices. So for those of you who didn't see it, before SmackDown, and we'll get to that later, The Rock cut another promo on Twitter, and this time he was in an empty mesquite rodeo arena. So the cowboy hat makes a little bit more sense now. But he's just going off on Seth, going off on Cody, going off on Cody's dog, and that's the line for me. That is the line. Many don't know, but last year I had to put my dog down from childhood, and it was a tough time for me, it was a tough time for the family. So I don't like all these strays that Cody's dog's been catching. You see what I did there? Ah, like and subscribe. So there are a few interesting things to take away from this Twitter promo. The Rock pretty much trashed Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins promo from Monday Night Raw. Said they didn't go hard enough, essentially. And personally, I think so too. They didn't have that fire in that promo that this rivalry need. Now last week during Friday Night Smackdown, there were a lot of interruptions throughout the broadcast just because the fans were chanting a lot of things you can't say on TV. And there were also a lot of signs that you can't show on TV. 
But The Rock actually took this and spun it. Instead of that being the case, he said that the TV networks were just not ready for what he had to say and they were scared and had their finger on the center button, which is actually a pretty good spin on it. However, this caused The Rock to start beef with the TV network standards and practices. I guess not the TV networks themselves, just their standards and practices. In efforts to prove that he's the real people's champ, he also mentioned that half of America wants him to run for president and The Rock's not even a politician. The Rock hates politics! And I thought that was a pretty decent bar. Now this led to the main event segment on Friday Night Smackdown. And I'm not gonna lie, it was mostly entrances. And speaking of that, The Rock has a new entrance and it's kind of inspired by Black Adam. And I find this pretty interesting because Black Adam is one of the few appearances that The Rock had in a movie where he was the bad guy or the closest thing to a bad guy. Also, this movie was one of his biggest failures. So it seems he's bringing one of his biggest failures into one of his most successful WWE runs ever. And by success, I mean ratings and profits earned. There's a lesson in there somewhere. I'm sure you'll find it. So another thing to note during his entrance, he kind of stormed past Roman Reigns to pose in the opposite corner. And Roman did react to that. Like he did show some type of frustration about that. So as the promo starts, they're doing that camera angle again where they show Roman in the foreground and Rock in the background. It's good foreshadowing, but it's also a pretty good camera angle, I'm not gonna lie. They're most likely using that a bunch in promos. Seth and Cody enter through the crowd. Now this is them kind of pleading their case about being the people's champ. They're actually willing to walk amongst the people. When was the last time you saw The Rock go through the crowd or Roman go through the crowd? And for The Rock, it's kind of understandable because his entrance was never through the crowd, but Roman specifically started his career entering through the crowd. Now, Seth had tape over his mouth and then ripped it off during the entrance. The cameras didn't catch it. In fact, it looked like they thought Cody and Seth were going to come out the same tunnel, but they came out of two different ones. So there is a few seconds of them trying to find Seth through the crowd. Like I said, this was more entrance than promo. And that's actually not a bad thing. Notice they're able to still tell stories between all four of these guys without them even speaking to each other yet. All types of foreshadowing and symbolism going on. By the way, what the hell is Seth Rollins wearing? And I get that's part of his gimmick, and I've even complimented some of his fits, but I can't get with this one, bro. He looks like a stack of tires. Anyway, Cody starts off with some gold medalist instigating. He said The Rock doesn't have authority and that's why he acknowledged Roman Reigns as his tribal chief. And Seth actually interrupts The Rock to call him Mr. Midlife Crisis and then accepts the challenge. And that's what we've been waiting on, to be honest like some fire from the baby faces because they were looking a bit too PC and PG. And speaking of PC, Roman called Seth a crossdresser and I'm sure that's gonna raise some eyebrows. Roman then displays his S tier manipulation skills and taunts Cody because Seth answers for him. That's when The Rock takes the mic, begins to run down Cody's family history, mentions that Cody is 20 years younger than his siblings, and then calls Cody a mistake. SmackDown ends with Cody finally slapping The Rock in the face. And when I say that, I mean it just abruptly ended. I saw some fan footage from after the show, and it turns out they just stare at each other and walk away. Oh God, The Rock's back at it again. So this week on whose storyline is it anyway, The Rock's in the gym and he's going in on Cody harder than he slaps his own forearms. And whoop him! And whoop him! He starts off once again mentioning that professional wrestling is cool again and it's all because of him. And a lot of people are either upset about this or running away with it, claiming that it's true. I think he's clearly working us. Like, it was already cool before he returned. I think he's bringing a lot more attention to the product, but... I think it was already just fine before he got there, you know? Well, at least as far as on-air content. Now, reports this week have come out that The Rock is probably going to be done after WrestleMania for a little bit. And this is no shock to many, but a lot of people are a bit disappointed. But this would also explain why he's going all out on a week-to-week -week basis. So like I said, this week he's in the gym. He happens to be holding a weightlifter's belt. And on it, it reads, blood, sweat, and respect. He then proceeds to cut one of the most disrespectful promos he's done so far. He starts recalling what he calls the slap heard around the world. But in my opinion, his slap was that. And he even recognizes it as a good slap. He slapped the shit out of me. He then mentioned what Cody went on to do on Monday Night Raw about two days later. Now, for those of you who don't know, Cody on the March 11th edition of Monday Night Raw cut a very emotional promo 
about his family, about how he can't give the title to his dad, but he is going to give it to his mom once he wins it. And he even broke down in tears. Man, and The Rock took that and ran with it. Are you f***ing kidding me? You start f***ing crying? He says this is why your fan base is a group of crybabies, because this is who they look up to. And then he also says that Cody Rhodes is not handing that title to his mom. In fact, The Rock is going to give her a different belt. And it's going to be the aforementioned weightlifting belt that he was holding in his hand. Except it's going to be covered in blood, sweat, and respect. Okay, he said blood and sweat, but he didn't say respect. That was me. So it seems like The Rock is just going to up the ante every single week. And I think we all know who he may mention next. But I believe they're going to save that for the week of WrestleMania. So, of course, he brings it to SmackDown. And there are actually a few things to note about his SmackDown appearance this week. Along with his new entrance that he debuted last week, he introduced a new theme, much similar to his old theme back in the day, but a lot more modern and cleaned up. So this week SmackDown was in Memphis, and for those of you who don't know, The Rock started his career in Memphis. This was his early stumping grounds, and I actually found this out watching his show, Young Rock. So because of this fact, he's more so playing towards the crowd instead of tearing them apart like he did that Arizona crowd. Cocaine and Matthews. So I noticed this time around he's wearing significantly lighter shades. And I don't know if this is because he's playing the face role or because he's about to read music off a sheet of paper. By the way, it's the Return of the Rock concert. For those of you not familiar with the Rock concert, the Rock pretty much plays the guitar and sings his insults. It's led to some great moments over time. This one was okay, definitely not one of my favorites, but there were still some pretty decent one-liners in there. So The Rock ends the segment with reminding Cody's mom in front of the live national audience that he's gonna beat Cody, leave that belt bloody, and hand it to her. And then he's gonna whisper in her ear, what can I say but you're welcome. Except he sang it. I'm not gonna sing it. So yeah, this rivalry just keeps getting more and more intense by the week. And in the grand scheme of things, they haven't really done any physical altercations. Like there's been two slaps throughout this whole storyline this year. They're really selling the story based off of actions, based off of foreshadowing, based off of just trusting that the fans know and are aware of what they're doing, what they're building towards, and then still able to swerve us all at the same time. To be honest, I think the Bloodline storyline may be one of the greatest WWE storylines of all time. It's been going on for three years. It looks like it's finally coming to an end in a few weeks. So shout out to them for building such a long-term storyline and keeping it interesting as the years go on. For the most part, I know a lot of things went wrong throughout Roman's entire championship reign and a lot of things had to go right in order for this to be successful, but I think what they've done with what they were given, they've killed it. So this past Friday, The Rock finally decided to give us a break from his seemingly never-ending trolling, and it was on Roman and Cody to kind of carry the storyline this week. Leading into this year's WrestleMania, up until this point, Cody and Roman haven't had too many memorable interactions with each other. Like when Cody won the Royal Rumble, he pointed at Roman, and they were also face-to-face -face when Cody seemingly gave his spot away to The Rock, and of course we have the kickoff show. But even that ended with The Rock slapping Cody, so the headline was that instead of anything Cody and Roman did. This week was an opportunity for Roman and Cody to actually sell their own feud. So Roman Reigns was on the Pat McAfee show, and he said a few things that were pretty interesting and I wanted to bring up. Now Pat McAfee actually referenced the fact that The Rock's thumb is always up when he's doing the bloodline hand signal. He even pointed out a fan holding a sign in the background warning Roman about The Rock turning on him at WrestleMania. So Pat asked Roman why he wanted to face The Rock so bad instead of Cody. And Roman calls Cody a bum, but he also says that if he beat The Rock, there's nothing anybody could ever question that he's done in the WWE. And Cody took that from him. He then goes on to call Cody a politician, and he calls Cody the crybaby for wanting to steal the spotlight. Now, I say all this to say everybody can't wait for The Rock to turn on Roman at WrestleMania, but what if Roman turns on The Rock? It's just a theory. Hear me out, hear me out, like and subscribe. But Roman has more of a reason to turn on The Rock than The Rock does turning on Roman. The entire reason that The Rock is even in a feud with Cody and Seth is because he's defending his family's honor. So why would he turn on his family at the end of WrestleMania? And I also see this theory going around that Cody has been working with The Rock the entire time. I don't think that makes a lot of sense either. In these weekly promos, The Rock has been talking crazy about Cody's family history, his dog, 
and even his mom. So how would Cody as a character look if he just let a man talk about his family, dog, and mother on live television and on social media just to win a championship? Like that just doesn't really fit his character. Not only that, but they've acknowledged, no pun intended, that everybody that Roman has aligned himself with turns on him on screen. So I'm saying that Roman is already aware that everyone he aligns himself with turns on him. So what if he does it first this time? This would explain why the signs are so obvious. This would explain why there's so much foreshadowing. This would explain so much as far as The Rock coming in and just running the entire show, taking over the entire feud. And it's been shown on screen plenty of times that Roman is not pleased with how much of the spotlight that The Rock is taking. The Rock was also the one that issued the challenge for the tag team match with the stipulation. So if they lose that match and Roman loses to Cody because the bloodline wasn't involved, that would be The Rock's fault. More of a reason for Roman to be upset at The Rock. And that's just storyline wise. If we look at it booking wise, the Rock isn't going to lose his first match after 10 plus years, but Roman also needs to remain looking strong up until that match inevitably happens. So to have The Rock turn on him and he loses his title doesn't have him looking too strong until the next time these guys meet. This would also still turn The Rock back face. Like in the realm of the storyline, he put his entire public image out on the line. He completely disrespected another man's family, all because of the love of his own family and he still got screwed over by his family. I think that's a pretty compelling storyline within itself. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm right though. I could be overthinking the whole thing, who knows. So on SmackDown, Cody and Roman face off. By the way, Roman's entrance was a respectable three minutes and 38 seconds. Roman starts off by calling Cody stupid. And he calls him stupid because he thinks with his heart and not his head. Roman then mentioned the fact that Cody aligned himself with Seth Rollins and at a certain point, Roman thought Seth was family, and we all know how that ended. And I'm done with the theory talk, but this is one of those moments I was talking about where he is aware that people usually turn on him. Cody says he knows all about the Shield. In fact, the first people to beat the Shield for the Tag Team Championships was Cody and Goldust with Dusty Rhodes at ringside. And I appreciate that they're implementing that history. That was actually one of my favorite Raw moments of that era. Cody asks Roman if he could trust The Rock, and Roman says that's a tired line. It kinda is. I'm ready for Cody to actually bring it when it comes to these promos. I know he's dealing with heel Rock, but at least against Roman, have something. He's really been getting scorched in all of these promos, and like Seth's been taking some type of shots back and forth, but this should be about Cody, and Cody has not really brought it as far as the trash talk goes. And I've kinda been wanting more from the baby faces like you shouldn't be able to only talk crazy because you're a heel. But here's the one thing that really drove me crazy. Cody reaches in for a handshake and Roman turns around and walks away and then calls out the boys and oh surprise, Cody also has backup. The reason I'm upset is why did Cody reach out for a handshake? This man has made your life and people around you's lives miserable. For the past few years, he's disrespected your family, but yeah, let me shake his hand before we have another match. I just wish they weren't portraying Cody as such a gentleman, like you can still be angry and a good person. They're humiliating him and disrespecting him and his family on a weekly basis. This would be justifiable anger. They really want him to be the next John Cena and face of the company. and. I feel like even Cena had moments where he was justifiably angry. Remember when Randy Orton kicked his dad in the head or when Edge slapped his dad? He literally threw Edge into a river. I'm not saying Cody has to go that far, but don't go in for a handshake. This is far past the point of just competition. The show ends with a standoff between the bloodline and Seth, Cody, and Jay. And moving forward, I hope to see a lot more aggression from Cody. I actually just left Monday Night Raw, and God, what a show, what a night. So this was actually my first Raw in about 10 years. The last time I went was to another Monday Night Raw right after Elimination Chamber. On that card, we had The Shield versus The Wyatt Family, and Seth Rollins kind of left the match early. Kind of foreshadowing his turn later on. And that was the last time I actually got to see Bray Wyatt in person. So I knew this one had a lot to live up to. But luckily, I knew CM Punk would be in town. I knew Cody would be there. However, I did not expect The Rock to show up. So for those of you who don't know, I've been covering The Rock's antics for the last six weeks. 
So in some weird way, I feel like I actually know The Rock. Not literally though, that would be insane. So when I hear his music hit, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda marked out. The entire crowd is just buzzing for CM Punk to come out, like that's all they really want. They're chanting his name before the show starts anyway. And it's his hometown, so of course we're happy to see him. Instead, we get Cody, and he starts cutting his promo about how he needs us to fight with him on WrestleMania night one and two. And here's something actually crazy. Cody gets the entire crowd to point at the WrestleMania sign. But from my perspective, and I don't know if you saw this on TV, it looked like everybody was putting up the day one bloodline hand signal. And then out comes The Rock. <laughs> Man, I've never been so happy to be hoodwinked, bamboozled, and smeckledorfed a day in my life. That's not even a word and I agree with you. So The Rock comes out, does a full entrance, and I mean poses on each corner, whispers something to Cody, and then just leaves. And we're all in the crowd booing, but at the same time, we're like, I guess his presence was enough? The Rock is later asked backstage what he said to Cody, and he tells the reporter, go ask Cody what he said. Based on how the night ended, it's a bit more clear on what he said. So Cody's profusely bleeding and then The Rock takes off his weight belt that nobody knew he had on. The Rock then takes some of Cody's blood and rubs it on the belt and now he's talking to Cody's mom saying he's gonna give her the belt? You take that however you want. Now in my last video I said that I wanted Cody to come out this week and be more aggressive and be more unforgiving. I don't think he understood the assignment. So yeah guys, I think Cody's character is always going to be one of those underdog characters where he can't ever be the aggressor, which is unfortunate and it may not work in the long run, but currently it's still telling a pretty good storyline. The Rock's actually supposed to be on Raw next week as well, so we'll see how this continues to unfold. <laughs> So the last time we saw The Rock, he left Cody face down in the rain covered in blood. And a few interesting things happened in between last week and this week. For one, when the cameras were done rolling, The Rock continued to beat Cody with that belt. Man, imagine being the cameraman and you have to tell The Rock that the scene's over. What, just because the show's over, that doesn't mean that the shit stops. Are, are you gonna tell him? Fans are also very into the beatdown that The Rock gave Cody last week. I saw a lot of excitement and speculation that the Attitude Era may be coming back, and although that would be great, I don't think it needs to. In the last few months, look what they've been allowed to do, and it's still a PG rating. All I ask is that they be more consistent with it. Around WrestleMania time, the swearing does increase and the blood does sometimes come out. However, usually after WrestleMania, it slows down immensely. So here's to hoping that with their move to Netflix next year, they're able to maintain consistency with being edgy. So it was revealed on SmackDown that it was Roman Reigns who sent The Rock after Cody. And I'm glad they're doing stuff like this because it gives everything a bit more context. It also adds new pieces to the puzzle that you can introduce to the story. And this brings us to this week's Monday Night Raw. And they start off by saying that Cody's not medically cleared to be in the arena. I don't know how he's not medically cleared to enter a building, but that's what we got. The Rock comes out and he cuts a pretty decent promo on how he put hands on Cody last week. Then he shows a short montage of how kids were crying after the beatdown. One little girl cried because she actually thought The Rock took Cody's life. And it actually reminded me of how wrestlers would do crazy spots or get beaten up or you know explode. And as a kid I would really think these things happened to them. And I think that's what it's all about. Not scaring little kids. That would be insane but reminding adults about their childhood. So Rock also mentions ratings and attendance records again, and I'm seeing a lot of mixed reactions, but regardless, the numbers speak for themselves. They have increased. Roman comes out, and his entrance is only about five minutes long. The first hour of Raw was commercial free, so I really thought they were gonna milk it, and five minutes is still ridiculous, but they've been longer. Michael Cole also mentions that in Roman Reigns' A&E documentary, he said if he loses this Sunday, 
he's gone. Roman cuts a promo pretty much thanking The Rock for taking care of Cody. And now comes Seth Rollins, and he's entering through the crowd again. Now, I've said it in previous videos, but I believe when they go to the crowd, specifically Cody and Seth, it's them portraying that they are the people's champion. They're willing to walk amongst the people. Seth challenges either The Rock or the Roman Reigns to a match later that night. Instead, we get Solo. Oh yeah, this match is also under Bloodline rules. It's also revealed later that night that Roman's gonna be the one inducting Paul Heyman into the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like they're better choices, but they either can't be mentioned or work for AEW. I saw a lot of people saying CM Punk would have been a great choice, but Punk hasn't been around for the last 10 years of Heyman's career, and I felt like over that time, Heyman and Roman probably got pretty close. So it's the main event, and the match completely breaks down as expected. It's also assumed that Roman Reigns leaves for the night. And Seth is pretty down bad and looks like he's next on The Rock's hit list. And that's when we get Cody coming out. Cody goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with The Rock and actually gets some pretty good offense in. He's going for a rock bottom through the announce table on The Rock. And out comes Roman to pretty much even the odds. We get a glimpse of what the tag team match is going to be like this weekend at WrestleMania. And then The Rock and Roman completely destroy Seth and Cody. The Rock's wearing that belt again that no one knew he was wearing and he gets to whipping both of them. And now that WrestleMania is this week, I do wanna say I'm not a big fan of how the baby faces were treated throughout this entire feud. Just verbally and physically, they looked inferior to the bloodline throughout this whole time. And I thought on the go home show of Raw, we would at least get that. And it ends with even more bloodline dominance. Now there's still one more show this week and that's SmackDown before WrestleMania. But at this point, I feel like it's too late. Like Cody's been slapped, He's been beaten, his family's been disrespected. Like storyline wise, what has Cody done that would have me believe he's gonna win this Sunday? And there is such a thing as being too much of an underdog to the point where if you do win, it's not really believable that you are able to win because you've shown no signs of being capable of doing that. And this isn't Cody and Seth slander. It's more so WWE's issue with writing strong baby faces. It's like either you're Triple H or John Cena who can't ever lose, or you're like Daniel Bryan or Sami Zayn who always lose until you get that one big victory. I'm hoping Cody doesn't end up one of those cases just because there's so much you can do with that character. Although Money in the Bank is coming up soon and that does have me worried about Cody's title reign if he does win. There are a lot of high stakes for this year's WrestleMania. This may actually be one of the biggest WrestleManias ever. So The Rock's involvement in both nights of WrestleMania this year was absolutely incredible. From the entrances to the storytelling, they really made everything come full circle, as well as setting up storylines for the future. There was a moment where Roman speared the rock on accident, and that's clearly setting up something in the future. But now that we got Cody actually finishing his story and getting his moment, the fans will care about that match a lot more. Seth Rollins was the MVP of the whole weekend, and even The Rock had to acknowledge that in an interview after WrestleMania. I'm expecting The Rock, Seth, and Roman to be off television for a while while Cody runs the show as champion. But luckily, there's something for each of them to come back to whenever they do decide to come back. So after what was, in my opinion, one of the greatest WrestleMania main events of all time, The Rock and Cody Rhodes come face to face on Monday Night Raw. And The Rock tells Cody, although his story with Roman may be finished, their story is just beginning. And I'm glad to hear because The Rock was very much so the dominant figure throughout their back and forth on the lead up to WrestleMania. And hopefully when he does come back, it's a lot less one-sided. But I do think that means Cody is in store for a fairly long title reign. At least until The Rock comes back and possibly costs him the title. So as far as The Rock's popularity, I think he'll always be a staple in the game. And he'll always be one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. But something I've noticed from this run is that the fans might have moved on. One thing I can say is that within WWE, they've determined their new people's champion in Cody Rhodes. And even in Hollywood, there's new faces popping up all over the place. There's new people that we see in every single movie instead of The Rock now. There are even times while I was covering him on a week-to-week -week basis that I wish the current WWE stars would shine more than he was. 
And he may be aware of this. Over the years, he's acquired the XFL, he's joined the TKO board members, and he also has his own production company. The Rock also just turned 52 in May of this year. So I think with these new business responsibilities, and also the fact that his last movie didn't do so well, he may be gearing up to step behind the scenes and move on with the next chapter of his life. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. I got another video coming out next Sunday early morning. Be on the lookout for that. Again, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and until next time, keep it kaze.